Uh, we got to bring this to the masses. We got to bring this to the masses. Okay, it says we're live. Okay, guys, so I want to welcome you to our uh, delayed broadcast of Caliber Corner episode number 42. Today we're going to have ourselves a good old-fashioned bolster talk. And uh, while that might seem kind of like a simple or boring topic, you're going to be amazed at the amount of depth that actually goes into the decision of what you're going to carry with. Uh, we're going to share all of our experience with you, those of us that do carry, those of us that have questions about carry. Uh, we're going to let you guys know. So we've got big announcements from everybody in the panel today that we're going to go through. Uh, real quick, it does say 10 watching now over on the uh, YouTube side. Guys, is that okay over there? I'm not seeing any chat over there. I want to make sure we don't run into the uh, same issue that we had before. Uh, so, and you guys want to check that real quick on the YouTube side. There we go. Okay, so there are... I just had to refresh my screen. So real quick, guys, we've got Midnight Range over there on the YouTube side. We've got tacos and French fries. Good morning, sir. Every time I say that, I am hungry. Makes me wish I had a taco bueno nearby, but I don't. Uh, Victor Cordovez is with us. Uh, holster talk. Where's Nathan? Yes, my holster episode. See, uh, going. there was a ton of suggestions that you guys made on my Instagram post for my 8,000 sub giveaway. I've got enough topics now to probably do another 100 episodes of Caliber Corner. Thank you, because sometimes I don't really struggle for topics, but... They just don't come to me as easily as I want them to. So WB is with us. Hey there. Hey there. Right back at you, buddy. Over on the gun channel side, we've already got a lively crowd. Uh, we got G webs over there. Dano's there. Dano's here. If I'm not mistaken, uh, paper plane crash is with us. Sand Hills is there and here. John is there and here. We got everybody hanging out with us today. By the way, G webs is selling links for this show. Uh, they are $1 and uh, 10 cents and 10% comes back to me. So I get a dime off of every link you purchase. So please, uh, make sure you go ahead and support uh, G-Webs for this cause. By the way, get over to Caliber Corner right now. Get signed up. Get yourself an account if you don't. It's one of the best places to be. Ooh, much more people just showed up. We got uh, Casino Boss joining us. Carolina Carolina Boy, the tank driver. All right. Rob D's in the house. And Nate2099, uh, Bruce Fallis is with us also. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get this party going. Let's let um, the panel go ahead and introduce themselves. So, First of all, on my left, we have a very special guest today, guys. This man, his blood, his sweat, his tears, other bodily fluids are 100% toxic masculinity. Give it up for our boy, John Z. John Z, how you doing today, sir? Good morning. How's everybody today? Oh, my God. That voice alone just just, just bleeds toxic, toxic masculinity. Um, so if you don't know, John Z is actually the bottle designer for toxic masculinity. We're not going to show a picture of the bottle because it's still in the conceptual phase. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep the show family friendly, G rated. So if you want to find the bottle design, it's out there somewhere on Instagram. Uh, John, what's what's new in your world, buddy? What's going down? Oh, not much. I'm here. I'm sitting here dying for some coffee, and I don't have milk, so I'm just waiting for that to milk? arrive. Dude, you don't do cafe con leche on a Saturday morning. You go straight black homes. Come on, man. Uh, Come on, we're going here, buddy. Leche. Cafe con leche. leche is the only way to go. Oh man, jeez. All right. SA, it's the only uh, way to go. What are they got wrong? All right. So <laughs> John D, I'll try to keep this one all in English. So all right. Thanks, man, for joining us. Any yeah. announcements? Uh, any announcements you want to make? Anything for you got stuff coming up for a channel? Any shows you want to promote or plug? What's new in your role, bud? Uh I'm working on some stuff. Um I lost some video that I was working on, so I'm just trying oh. to reduce certain things. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, some things are coming out, but uh, not going coming out as quickly as I'd like them to. All right, uh, but I'll get it. I'll get them done when I when I get them done. So, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah, no, you get through when you get there, man. Again, it's 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 a marathon, man. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's end game, homie. Sure. It's the end game. All right. Yes, Why am I talking all like I'm hip hop today? I don't know what the deal is. You bring out the burrow in me, John. You bring out hey, the what? The Wu Tang. Keep it down with. Just Wu -Tang. keep it down with the hood. Word. Okay, so Dano, what's going on, man? How's it going? Same I'm doing step fine. Into, uh, you step into a hip hop session, but yeah, yeah, and, and hip hop is not my thing, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and just be quiet in the corner. <laughs> All right, man. So what's corner. new in your world? I want to welcome you back here. Welcome back to the corner. So what? Uh, what's new in your world? What are you doing? Uh, actually, not a whole lot. I actually did a little filler show, uh, just because oh, I was yes. up and doing laundry, and and so yes. did a little bit of that, and then shut it down just before you fired this one up. Cool. And, cool. Uh, ironically, uh, I think I when I. I, I turned on the YouTube page uh, so I could see the comments over there, and uh, YouTube put a holster ad in front of this show, ironically. Really? Really? That's what they presented it to me. Which is funny, because when I do the anti-NRA stuff, the uh, the NRA commercials with with, with uh, Dom always play before, uh, before the show, Dominic Razzo or whatever his name is. 
Uh, right. So it's kind of funny. So they must be scanning ahead of time to see what uh, what I'm going to be featuring. So I don't know. Right. They they saw the word holster and somebody's selling holster. So you nice. got it hooked up. Nice. Nice. That what? Well, oh man, is it for the urban carry where the guy like yeah, the, from, like a milk of a navy out of his pocket, like his man bun rubber band falls out or something? Right. Is that uh, <laughs> money is all green? What's that? Money is all green. All right. Hey Gizzard, real quick, buddy. I went ahead and sent you a link. Just to let you know. Uh, oh, hey, real quick. Uh, Frank Hellman says, Harry's Holsters just finished a 2,000 round test on the P365 and the firing pin broke. Oops. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Not a good sign. Sounds kind of like my uh, Sky CPX2. All right. So, Dano, any shows you want to promote or plug? Anything out there that you want people should be checking out? What do you think, man? Uh, Daily Gun Show, and uh, there will be a rebirth of the early watch. Uh, it's not quite ready for the total rebirth. But it has not died off. Uh, there were just some issues that uh, people were working on, and it is still there. It is still a thing, and it will return. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, time slot, what are we looking at? Are we still looking at the same time as usual? Or are we going to mix it up a little bit, or what? Uh, uh, I don't know for sure. Right, right now, uh, it's the same time slot, but that's subject to change. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Cool, man. All right, joining us today, we got Night Strike. Night Strike, what is new in your world, bud? What's going down? Uh, I woke up this morning and I had an email from YouTube. I don't know if you got that this morning too. Uh, no, uh, now what are they changing? No, it's uh, hello, so and so, keeping it real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just uh, it's from the CEO. I don't know if they're sending this to everybody or just singular people. So that that lady that thinks she's a content creator. The, that's the CEO. Yeah. Oh, CEO? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The one who tries to make content. So, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. You're really in touch with their audience. So, um, so hey, man, any shows you want to promote? Anything you want to plug? What do you think, man? What's going down? Uh, the, the only thing I'd like to plug is yeah. check out GunTube. GunTube.org. Just check, just check out GunTube. There we go. I'm done. I will put a link to it over in the side chat here for you guys. Get on over there. Good stuff, good stuff. Make sure you check out Hit or Miss on Tuesday nights, 9 o'clock uh, Eastern time, right? No, they don't, 9 they don't, they don't need to check that out. They just need to check GunTube out. All right, just go to GunTube. We're going to make GunTube happen. Uh, maybe going to get some Indiegogo or some crowdfunding going to get or more kick server start. space. Kickstart it. Get it going. Once we have the space up and running, then uh, we can really, really make the sucker go. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of good social media gun, gun channels coming out there. Um, I, I think it's good that we have, there's going to be some competition, but there's also multiple platforms out there. So, you know, th if things like this happen where us gun channels get booted off, we've got other places to go. And I think that's important. So cool, man. All right. Just joining us, Matt, NEA, Mr. Matt, never enough ammo's with us today. Hey, how's your morning going, dude? Uh, not too bad. Almost done with work. So cool. Cool. Thanks for joining in, man. We're just having a little bit of a holster chat today. Uh, we did a concealed carry chat, but it was more focused on like the firearms and the ammo. It wasn't so much with uh, holsters. And this was a Instagram request for my 8,000 sub giveaway. So we've got about 100 topics now to cover. Um, and this is one of them. So we're Nate2099 suggested it. So Matt, any experiences you have with holsters? We'll, we'll share it when we get there. And uh, any announcements you want to make, Matt? Anything we should be watching for, looking for? Uh, what's up? Oh, man. Hell, just go hit the channels up, I guess. I don't know. Go hit gun channels. Go have fun. Definitely, definitely check out Matt's uh, Mr. Matt channel, and uh, again, he's got a lot of good videos he's posting up on there. A lot, a lot of good material. Uh, do, do subscribe and get over there as soon as you can. So, all right, moving on over, Mr. Yeah. Big Time. Oh, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I was just saying. I mean, how does it feel now that you're you're twice as big of a channel as me? Oh my God. No, not not really. <laughs> <laughs> all right, because if we compare our B channels, I've got about thirteen hundred subs on the Interrupts Patushka channel, and you've got about four thousand now. Is that what you're up to? So yeah, I think forty one hundred or something. Ah, there you go. There you go. Get back up there. Yeah, get back up there. No, that's cool, man. It's good. I don't I don't worry about it. Like I said, we'll probably wake up at some point and our channels be gone anyway. So I'm expecting it. Probably. I don't get too I don't get too excited about it because it probably won't be there tomorrow. So yeah. you know we got guntube.org. We can start over. It's more fun starting over anyway. It opens up a lot more possibilities. You can do it better the second time around anyway. That's what I feel about it. So, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see, Matt, you got any shows you want to promote? Anything people should be looking for? What's what's going on with your channel? Oh, no. I mean, well, if you like video games, hit me up on Twitch. There you go. Mm. You know? I've been well, playing, playing your... there a couple nights a week. Cool. So. cool. Yeah, I'm going to try to catch a little bit more of that this summer once we get out of school. I'll have more time to watch and comment and hang out and stuff. But good stuff, man. Good stuff. Um, also, make sure you check out Matt's uh, Trigger, Trigger Time Roundtable. 
Is that what we're calling it now on on Wednesdays? Yep. The Monday nights, Guns and Geeks. Yeah. That way, I don't have to come up with a new name every single Wednesday for the chat. <laughs> I just call it Trigger Time Roundtable, and then yeah, I that don't works. Have to out. No problem. No problem. Cool. Cool. All right. Moving back, Mister Big Time, the man who just broke through a thousand subs. What last night? Yesterday, Sandhill Shooters with us, and you got. We got some stuff to talk about. You got a little a little anniversary today, is that right? What's going on in your world, man? It is, and yeah, I uh, went to bed. I think I had nine hundred and ninety-four subs, and I woke up this morning ten more than that. So, woke thank up this you, everybody. Bugatti. All right, yeah. <laughs> um, and and yes, today is my first anniversary. So thanks for so, spending it with me. I mean, us. So, you know? Well, you know, I was I was up first and. <laughs> and I uh, decided I'd let her sleep in a little bit before we had to get rolling on the road today. So we are yep. spending our anniversary uh, DJing for uh, somebody else so they can have their first anniversary a year from today. Uh, hey, Frank Hellman out in the chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's how we spend our weekends most of the time is uh, uh, we hang out together anyway. Uh, it's been, been a lot of fun, but uh, we love doing the DJ gig part-time on, on the weekends. So that's pretty cool. Now, one way that we know that your wife is incredibly awesome is because she just picked up a little something for your anniversary. Do you want to talk about that? Well, first of all, yeah. First of all, one way that we know that my wife is incredibly awesome is look who she married. She's got excellent wow. taste in men. Of course, of course. She's the only, the only thing better than my wife's taste in men is my taste in women. And so, <laughs> hey man, whatever works for you. Okay. <laughs> so, right, okay. Right. So, yeah. so there's a little bit yeah. of a story uh -huh. and, uh, Apparently, she had an accomplice on this gift. So we had somebody down in Tulsa that happened to to spot something that you were really interested in. Is that right? Well, well, here's yeah, what happened. A little we, bit we of had, mischief going on down in Tulsa. We, we had our table, the 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 gunchannels.com table that we were hanging out at there at the, uh -huh. at the gun show, and two tables down was a, a table full of rifles and whatnot. And I didn't pay any attention to, to where they were from, but I just, I noticed that they had a, a really nice uh, Browning X-Bolt, which is, you know, I've been looking for an X-Bolt in 270. And, and every time I see them, you know, I, I drool, but then I just, you know, they're expensive. There's, that's a lot of money for a gun and it's well worth it, but it's, that's just a lot of money. I don't care who you are. And so um, I was fondling this, this gun. It had the nice, uh, not, not, not just wood, not just walnut, but it had the maple finish and not a lot of people have ever seen the X bolts with the the two tone maple finish. It's got rosewood on the uh, the cap on the fore end, and then on the uh, the cap on the pistol grip, and everything else is is just a nice uh, tiger stripe maple uh, high gloss finish. And so I, I thought this is you know it's beautiful. And uh, I was I was actually I took a picture of it. I, I sent it sent a message to my wife, and I said, hey, you know, do we do we have any way that we can free up the free up the funds? And she said, there's just there's just no way we can do it right now. And so unbeknownst to me. She turned around and sent a message to a friend of ours on Facebook named Travis P11. And she was <laughs> talking to you apparently this whole time uh -huh. uh, that, that I didn't even know about. And I walked away. Mm -hmm. Travis walks over to this table, finds out that it's actually the guys out at Kearney, which is uh, In when, Nebraska. When Travis goes to the movie theater, or you know the the the, ne the closest town that's that's considered a big town from where he lives, that's that's the town, and uh, find out that you know it's it's in state. We don't have to mess with any extra paperwork or anything like that. And he messages my wife back and says, "Hey, if you can get this guy a hundred dollar deposit, you know the gun's yours." And so they they worked that out. The gun did not come home uh, with us. I would have I would have noticed in that little car that there was a, a brown. <laughs> yeah, there's there, no so. way I could have hit that. <laughs> What's up in the top? Uh, fishing poles. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so uh, she she finally took possession of the rifle yesterday uh, from the guy. His, his daughter actually lives in uh, the town where where Travis. Uh, his parents yeah, live, parents even, live. Yeah. even closer to where I live. And, and so uh, he, he drove about 15 miles out of his way to deliver it to my wife uh, where she works. And, and so, uh, so it was, it was nice of him to do that. And, and uh, I, I got my rifle last night. So I don't know if you guys oh, can, yeah. can see in the glare, but look, look at the, just look at the finish on that. It's got the rosewood right there. And then on the four in there. Um, but yeah, X Bolt Medallion 270 Winchester. That's that's what I've been looking for right there. And what's funny about this is I, I sent a picture of the side of the box to his wife, and I and when I found out the guy was from Nebraska, I said, "How much to 
what would it take to get you guys to take that back home? I got a, my buddy, you know, his wife wants to buy for their anniversary. He's like, just, you know, a hundred dollar deposit. We can hold it. And so I immediately sent his wife messages at hundred bucks. They'll pull it. And the funny part is you went back to go play, to go I, look I, at it. I went back <laughs> one, one more time just, just to see it, you know, just to touch it and, mm-hmm. and drool on it just a little bit. And as I'm standing there, the guy walks over right in front of me, picks it up, picks the box up that it was sitting, you know, he had them laid out on top of their boxes on his table, picks up the rifle, picks up the box, sits it back behind the table and says, well, that one just sold. I'm like, well, <laughs> and, and I, your face, man, it's like a little kid having that last piece of candy snatched from his hand. So, yeah, yeah I, I know exactly what that feeling is now. So, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I had, I had no idea until, until last night. So uh, you guys, you guys uh, that are in cahoots like that, you, you do good work, and, and thank you for your help, Travis. No problem, man. No problem. There's there's kind of some uh, uh, – some <laughs> no problem. I'm glad to help out. Uh, yeah, about the late start time, I do want to apologize. I tried to make this clear. I announced it on Matt's show. I put in the title for this video. I put it up on Gun Channels this morning. I needed new tires on my vehicle. I had two ball tires on the back of the Jeep. My fronts were down to about their last 10% of tread, and I had to get new tires. The problem with living in a small town – Nothing really opens till 7.30 or 8, so I dropped it off this morning, and uh, they're going to be working on it until I have no idea when, but I had to get new tires, and I've got a lot of road trips coming up this summer, so I just, it's a problem with me, you know, I'm at school from 8 to 4 every day, so I can't get stuff done during the week unless I, you know, call on a sick day, which will never happen, so um, that's why I'm late starting. We'll, I don't know, we might go to 9 o'clock if I'm not going to be corking anybody. I don't want to throw anything off. There was some discussion in the panel beforehand, maybe start at 9 o'clock. You guys can maybe give me some feedback and tell me what you think. I, I guess I like to do the eight because it's early in the morning. You can catch it if you're up waking up or working on stuff or, you know, it's out there. It's already for you to, to listen to for the rest of the day. I don't want to go too late. And sometimes, I mean, I'm just busy on the weekend. So I try to get stuff done by nine or 10 because I got to start my weekend because I can't do anything unless it's the weekends. Right. Um, but anyway, we may do a nine o'clock time. I don't know. So uh, Squibby, let's get to you and then we'll come back to Giz or Gary. Uh, Squib, what's going on, man? How are you doing today? Doing good, enjoying the weather. All right, you on the road today? You going out to check out some games or what? No, I mean, uh, well, I'm at my son's flag football game, but uh, and we're not uh, we're not going to be out and about this weekend. Okay. Oh no, I just mean you're on the road for the flag football, like you are on the weekends and stuff. Oh, on the road is around the corner. I mean, oh, never mind. Okay. There's a there's an <laughs> airport next to our house, and it's. Uh, Right in the uh, flight path of the airport, so. Ah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Hey, Squib, you got any shows you want to plug or anything you want to tell us about your channel? Uh, anything you want to share with us at all today? Uh, my channel's lame. I've only got a couple of videos. They're lame. I've got some stuff in the works. I've been I've been putting it off, uh, you know, just not enough time to, to put into it. I've got uh, a few videos planned. Eventually, I'll release them. Uh uh, shows uh, it starts at Monday and ends up uh, here at Saturday. So Mondays uh, at 10 or 11 Eastern, we keep kind of changing up the start time. It's lock and load with Hawaii Volcano Squad. All right. And for those of you who are wondering, he is on the island with the eruption. But uh, when when I contacted him about if he's okay, he said, you know, it's no big deal. And he said, meh, you know. So I guess these sort of things happen over there in Hawaii all the time. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, sometimes I'll jump in, uh, hit or miss Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock. And uh, then Fridays is uh, the day that I try to weasel into the most shows. Uh, I'll go on uh, Budget Guns and Gear at 7 Eastern. Yeah, uh, sometimes I'll check out his channel. Yeah. 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 Um, <clears> I'll t- I, I, t- I wrecked it with another rant last night. <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> and, and then sometimes after that. Uh, gels my outdoors or the friday night strike yeah. uh and then uh later uh like uh every other week last night heavy b had a show uh he does uh friday night sites every uh every other week around i think it's around 10 eastern we were we were having trouble because arizona doesn't observe daylight savings time so we we're texting back and forth trying to figure out what what start time was you know his time and my time trying to get on the same page and uh, then after that, it's uh, Edge of the Week, Edge 4006. Uh, and uh, he kept me up till 2.30 last night. We were talking about uh, the volcano with Hawaii Volcano Squad and Dusty One and Hashnazi. 
And uh, so I'm kind of glad that your start time is a little bit later. I'm, I'm definitely going to put me in for a later start time. Uh, also, I forgot on Wednesdays and Saturdays, Rick's Life as I See It. I forgot to mention that last time I was doing shout outs. Uh, he does a podcast, I think it's at 7 Eastern on Wednesday and 3 Eastern on Saturday. And uh, he doesn't disappoint. So, yeah, I try to weasel onto any of those shows there. And I'm sorry, Caliber Corner, obviously, with uh, question mark, new start time. Maybe I don't know. I mean, I it's it's uh, we could, but then if we're pushing it to eleven, it's just it's hard for me on the weekends between trying to get out to the range and do stuff around the house and run out of town and have family. We we may we may look at a nine o'clock, but I'll I'll make sure I make it clear in the title if we're going to do that. I guess I'm always up, so it doesn't matter, but. Um, you yeah. know, it might work better for people to go a little bit later in the day. I mean, we've been doing it at 8 a.m. for the last year. We're one week short of the year right now. So um, we can we can just it, kind of play by ear. It is kind of hard to, to keep everybody happy with the start times. I, I know that uh, when I'm trying to jump onto a show and it's right around the time that I'm leaving work, that's actually harder than doing a show during yeah. work where I might be able to take a lunch break or – like yeah. today, you know, I'm, I'm at my son's flag football game. But in the summer, he won't be doing that. But then just like you, I'll be out on the road. So uh, yeah, I mean, so is, you're going to yeah. – are you going to be doing any caliber corners from the road this summer? I, I don't know if my, the network is really good enough for it. Plus, there's a lot of road noise in my vehicle. I've got a noisy SUV. So, I mean, it's – I we can try it. I did one when I was coming back from the 2A rally in November. I went live just for the heck of it to test it. Um, I, maybe if I get a headset, it would be a little bit better. We possibly could. Um, I mean, I'm the thing is when it comes to summertime, I've got a few projects coming up where I won't be able to do a caliber corner on Saturday, uh, one or two weeks in May. We got some some major projects going on around the house, and I've got to be outside. Um, but otherwise, you know, I might try to do something from the road, maybe just go live. I don't want to cork anybody, so it's hard for me to really know who's going to be who's who's live and when because it seems like we got somebody live every hour. You know, it's yeah, and that's a good so thing. Us is going live. It is, but I also don't want to jump over right. somebody else's time. So. It gives people a choice, though. I mean, it gives you know, if, if I maybe mean, maybe the show it. isn't the topic isn't what they want to hear. Yeah. It's not going in a direction. They can just change channels. So yeah. it's not yeah. a, it's I mean, not always a bad thing when it overlaps. A lot of the late shows, I listen to them the next day uh, during the day, like when I'm around the house or in the morning. I'll listen to them the next day because I'm just not up that late when they're on live. So it's yeah, and and for. Um, for, for those of you who live in the uh, warmer areas of the country, you can start doing all of your uh, yard work and home repairs and everything else much earlier in the year and continue much later in the year than Travis and I. So when it gets warm <laughs> like this, we take advantage of it. Yeah, and I mean, weekends are the only time we have time to do that stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, that's really between range time, family time, you know, yard work, just stuff in general. It's crazy. So. All right, man. All right. So thanks for joining us today. Gizzard Gary, do you want to give us a plug for your channel? What's going on, dude? Hey, hey, thanks for the invite. Oh, uh, man. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Gizzard Gary on YouTube, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Recently, oh, I just ended up copying a bunch of stuff over to that uh, gun streamer place, too. Okay. Uh, just to try it out. Okay. Um, as far as uh, stuff to promote, oh, I've been, I did a couple live chats recently. I still have lots more content from Tulsa to put out that I'll be getting together shortly. Right. Um, and like Mr. Night Strike, I'd like to promote GunTube. Check it out. GunTube.org. Make sure you guys get over there and get signed up so you can comment on the videos and uh, post videos if you want to and get your channel going, right? Opportunity to get in on something new, which is a lot of fun. I really like that. You bet. Cool. So uh, today's topic, again, it's holsters. We're just now getting into it. A lot of announcements, a lot of things going on. I don't think there's only anything else we needed to cover before we get into this. Um, you know, when it comes to, to holsters, it, there's so many factors that affect what you're going to buy and what you're going to go with. You've got your budget. you got to decide if you're going to go outside the waistband or inside the waistband. You've got to decide on the kind of material you want. The gun that you're carrying, can you comfortably carry it the way you want to carry it? your figure, your form. So all of you guys that are here, I'm assuming that that you've used a holster at some point. Now, John Z, we know that the Block 19 has a holster, um, but you're, you're not able to carry because of the rules. But if you got questions for us about holsters, at some point you might find yourself in the market for concealed carry firearm. If you ever get to a place where you can have a firearm or that you can carry, uh, let us know, John. And you guys out in the chat, if you have questions about holsters, 
it's kind of one of those things where a lot of guys will buy a brand and they just stick with it and that's all they use and they're happy with that brand because once it kind of gets you in there you know you're going to maybe be a customer for life or you might not consider switching to other brands i've kind of found that with myself in terms of the brands that i use for my own uh concealed carry holster so i just want to run this through the panel quick let us know uh what 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 holsters work best for you maybe an outside the waistband or inside the waistband option maybe a brand or a model get some ideas out there for viewers i mean if you do a ten dollar uh ebay holster fine tell us if that's what you do if you do something more expensive or somebody you know that does great custom work let us know so just a general holster discussion then we'll talk about belts a little bit uh why i think it's important that you have a good carry belt but again you can work with whatever budget you have so uh, Gary, let's start off with you. When you go to the range, what is your preference for a holster? Do you like paddle style? Do you do a nylon? Do you do Kydex? What do you do whenever you go to the range or what do you carry in general? In general, uh, I've pretty much settled on, I'm a pocket carry guy. Okay. And uh, I started out with uh, mostly the DeSantis Nemesis, but then I my local gun store put up a display for sticky holsters oh yeah I and mean, i bought a couple of those and i really kind of fell in love with those so that's yeah. my go-to holster right now is a sticky holster it it does good in a pocket also does good for a quick iwb okay okay and it works for me cool 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 and sticky holsters is the brand right i mean i've that's used the, other sticky style holsters just not yes that, that brand. is the name of the brand sticky holsters they have a website stickyholsters.com what uh, what kind of price are we looking at? What do they what do they what do they bounce between? There seems like around uh, twenty five dollars, twenty five thirty. Okay, cool, cool. That's one that I think we should definitely look into. I know that uh, Clinger Holsters, and I'm I'm a loyal customer a customer of theirs. They've made a sticky style holster. They sent them out to a lot of us gun channel guys to review, and they're very convenient. You've got something covering the trigger, which is important. You got something you can just throw in your pocket if you want to. You got something you can inside the waistband if you want to. Uh, so that sounds good. Any? Do you have any dedicated outside the waistband holsters that you like to wear? Do you just do a, like a like a Blackhawk or a Blade Tech? What do you do? You have a preference for outside the waistband? Well, the few times I carry outside the waistband, which is usually with my uh, Taurus PT One Eleven, I have yeah. a. Uh, and this is gonna sound horrible because people hate these, but I've got a Phobos paddle holster okay. that I really like. I don't really have too many that actually clip onto the belt itself. I I like something <laughs> I can put on and take off really easy. Where does the hate come from for the paddle holster? Is it the fact that it pops out of your belt easy, like you can just whip it out too quick? Or is it the fact that they could possibly have a negligent discharge when you put it back in? Or what is it about the – what is the hate from? Is it the fact that it's a cheap holster or what? Uh, yeah, the, the company, Phobos – doesn't have the greatest reputation in the world with some people. It's also it's a foreign company. It's Israeli, if I'm Israeli. Not mistaken. Yeah, I think they make uh, stocks and stuff. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. But uh, and uh, but uh, at least that particular one works for me. Now I bought one for a Taurus eighty five that I've tried and I've had nothing but problems with it because it refuses to release my weapon when I need it to. Yeah, when you start talking like a level two, the little, little button you got to push, it has problems. No, there's no oh. button. It's just too tight to fit. Okay, okay, okay. And I've tried I've tried taking the Dremel to it and grinding this down, that down. Yeah. I just haven't had much luck. So, yeah, I, you know. I think Phobos is that brand that Clint Smith out at Thunder Ranch is so fond of, the, the paddle holsters. Now, you say that with some some sarcasm, right? Because is that for that <laughs> video that we're referencing? Is that right? It, when, when the chat's over, everybody go look okay. up Thunder Ranch and look up Clint Smith um, Phobos paddle holster, paddle holster review video. It is, it's it only about hilarious. 30 seconds long, yeah. but it is amazing. Uh, it's not safe for work, and don't, don't watch mm -hmm. with little kids in the movie. Which, you know, is kind of ironic because you would think if something comes out of Israel and it has to do with guns and defense, it's probably going to be some serious gear because of what they deal with on a daily basis. You would think that they make stuff that's going to work for people or. Yeah, or, but these are the same guys that don't carry around chambered. Okay, good point. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, cool, cool. Uh, so, John Z, you had your Block 17 concealed down in Tulsa. Uh, that, that holster, John, do you remember what the brand was or, or what the company or was that Kydex or what was it? Because you showed it off because you were you were concealing that block. Uh, notice I'm not saying Glock 17 or Glock 19. You're Block 19. John, what, what was that? So 
Um, just to for to correct, it's a block nineteen. Block nineteen. Okay, model, so seventeen, but okay. Model eleven. It's a Gen Gen six, right? It's the no, newest it's a thing. Gen eleven. It's a Gen eleven. Model. It's a Gen nineteen eleven. Yeah, block nineteen. Okay, eleventh Gen. Now they call it a ghost gun, but that's just that's not politically correct. It's not a ghost gun. Oh no, this 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 thing is is weighty. You'll know it's there. Trust me, oh, it's yes. not a ghost. Oh, yes. And uh, the guys, holster, yeah. And the holster is from which was, by the way, given to me by P two two six nut. If anybody wants to go check him out, and the holster is Tucker and Bird with the Y in Texas. Ooh. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So it's a it's a outside the waistband. It's just a it's a belt holster. So you just slide your pistol in there. And uh, it fits real nice. Make sure you have a good, comfortable belt for it. Yes, yes. And this we'll thing, this yeah. thing fits real nicely in there. So, if you guys are confused, so, if you don't know what the Block Nineteen is, is that is that John? We needed to give John something he could take back to New York, something he could conceal carry, something he could use to defend himself. So, it was basically a rough block of steel that a nineteen eleven would be machined out of. Is what we gave you as a going home gift. So it's kind of an L-shaped piece of iron that could, or stainless steel that could be shaped into a firearm. And so John had that in the holster. He was still carrying that. He was he was practicing, you know, because he's got to have something to defend himself, just, you know. And I just want to say thank you again to Ohio 45 ACP for that. So we, did you put, put any pictures of, up of that thing at all or not? Did you put that up on Instagram? Any photos? I uh, honestly, I'm not even sure. You should call it the first New York Absolutely. legal block 19 that anybody can carry if they want to. It doubles as a hammer. Um, it's a nice blunt. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not yourself. New York legal. You could you could break out glass with it if you have to. If you have to get out of your vehicle, if you're pinned. <laughs> and, and, and if you ever ran out of one and you just don't know what to do, pull out your block 19 and you wait. If you throw it the right way, it doubles as a boomerang, doesn't it? It's kind of um, uh, I don't know if it'll go practice. Go to the it'll, it'll, practice. It'll, it'll go it'll go forward on the release. Coming yes. back, it's a little it's a little you know, it's it, it's like a couple. The other one is just not happy with you that day. They decide if they want to come back or not. What okay. if you tie a string to it and make it more like a yo-yo? It'll probably break his um, finger. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that would have to be a really good spring. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, there's there's more stuff popping up over in the chat over here. Nate2099 was asking, I have no experience with anything 511 tactical. Uh, he's saying any experience with the 511 jeans that are supposed to be designed around concealed carrying. Uh, we can kind of talk about off-body carry, you know, if we're talking like a pocket carry versus a holster. A lot of you guys are mentioning more brands. I'm seeing some alien gear popping up over here. Nightwolf is also popping up too. So we'll get to alien gear here in just a little bit as we run through the panel. Uh, before you before yeah. you move on yeah, to the next part, I just want to confirm we're talking about New York City here. Yes. Because the rest yes. the rest of New York is like an actual const part of the Constitution states. The rest yes. of New York is a normal part of the country. We're talking about New York City here. Yeah, um, Omaha, Nebraska, they're not as restrictive, but it's the same environment, the same idea that once you get out of Omaha and Lincoln, the rest of the state knows how to defend their lives, but people in Omaha and Lincoln. From what I went read the other day, that's not entirely true. What's that? Well, well we're uh, not talking, we're not, we're not talking. We're not talking about legislation, so. Ah, uh, yes. The state as far as being able to purchase. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Cool, man. Cool, cool. All right. Dano, what works for you for carry, man? What do you prefer? Yeah, uh, I live in Illinois, and so open carry is not an option, which means concealed carry is the only option. Okay. And uh, I started with uh, a hybrid holster, uh, which is, uh, for those that may not be aware, it's uh, leather on the inside against your skin and kydex on the outside. So you get the advantages of the kydex, get a little bit more comfort with the leather. Uh, mine is from Concealment Solutions. It's called the Black Mamba. Uh, I think it runs about 70 bucks. Uh, I've had it now for um, just short of five years, and uh, when, when I choose to hip carry at three o'clock, that is my go-to holster. Now, like many other people, I have a drawer full of holsters, 
uh, but that was one of my earlier holsters and it still has not been replaced as my on body three o'clock. Now, when I work, uh, I vest carry uh, simply because uh, I, I'm typically in the driving position and I can draw from that position. Um, so I have a vest that has uh, uh, something that covers the trigger guard, but allows me to pull out a firearm with the seatbelt on. Uh, and and, and uh, th that works really well. So, um, uh, and, and that's, uh, but like I said, I've got a drawer full of um, things that I tried and clearly didn't work. And unfortunately I didn't realize that until after I put down the money, but that, that, that that's a common thing. Uh, so, so uh, I guess if I, anybody was new out there, don't be concerned that, that you're gonna buy one and you have to commit to it for the rest of your life. You're yeah. probably gonna try a couple of holsters before you find what you like. No, this is very true. I've gone through several several different brands and different styles and types, and you know you'll find the one that works best for you eventually, and then you'll stick with it. And uh, no, it's good to know. Yep, cool, man. All right, all right. Um, okay, so Matt, what works for you uh, when you do any kind of outside the waistband or inside the waistband? What do you what works best for you? Oh man, I, I uh, I've tried just about everything. The only thing I don't like are hybrid holsters. I hate huge okay. ass holsters that cover the whole side of your body with two big clips. They're horrible to get on and off. <laughs> that's about the only thing I don't like. Um, you know, I've got, uh, I don't, I don't inside the waistband carry that often. Occasionally I've had to, and I usually that's with my Glock and I'll run a Black Hawk leather holster, single clip, uh, that I like that I've been, I actually bought that when I bought the gun, like six years, seven years ago, whenever it was. Okay. Um, uh, outside the waistband, I prefer Kydex on on just about everything uh it just works better i've got a, a bravo concealment that i like but i don't really recommend them because there are better companies out there that don't cost as much money but it's still a okay. good holster okay. um i've got uh i actually my, my the best holsters i have are uh kydex holsters that were made by other youtubers who were sent to me um there's a, a one guy who uh, runs a place called uh, Redstone Concealment. He sent me one that I've been running for a long time uh, okay. that I really, really like. Um, there's uh, 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 Armed Civilian 556 on YouTube uh, made me my go-to uh, holster for my, for my Glock 26 that I use all the time. Um, but honestly, for about the last year and a half, I've been obsessed with pocket carry. And yeah. so I've been carrying mostly my Ruger LCR pocket carry um and even got it to where my wife nope he's gone through a dead zone okay. he'll come back in a sec um when that pocket kydex carries, oh yeah there you go trigger okay. guard yep yeah so it's just a little kydex trigger guard is all it is and they make them to fit whatever gun you're getting and and it just snaps over the trigger guard and then you it, at the end of it it has a little hole punched through it with a little eyelet that they insert and it, the, they run, of course, I've found that uh, I need a longer piece, so I put my own on there, but they run a piece of paracord through there. And what you do is you loop it around your belt, and then you cover your trigger guard, and you tuck it in your pocket. And what it does is it's just, it's just short enough that as you pull the gun out of your pocket and go to present it to the target, if you ever had to pull it, that trigger guard just snaps off and just hangs by your side. And so you don't have to pull it out of a holster. You don't have to do anything. Just as you're pulling the gun up, that motion comes up just snaps it off the front of the trigger guard the same as if you were pulling it out of a out of a kydex holster and i love those things and they're like 15 18 bucks or something on on their on their website uh they're really really cheap and uh i, I love those things and i can't say enough good stuff about that that aegis armory guardian and you know you you find yourself yourself personally doing a lot of pocket carry because your weather it's too damn hot to wear a, maybe a second shirt or an over shirt or a big heavy leather holster you know you want just the simple throw the pocket of the cargo shorts kind of thing and, and go, you know, you want to go for some, some ease of comfort. Um, what about like with jeans? How do you do that with jeans? Is it print with that, that pistol? I mean, does it, cause you don't really have anything covering up the, 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 the outline of the gun. Do you notice that at all? Or do you wear a, a bag of your jeans? So you don't notice it or it just doesn't. Well, you might be in a dead zone right now. So Matt, if you can come back in comment on that, if you get a chance, like with jeans, how does that work out with the pocket carry? Uh, now, Night Strike, you don't have a concealed carry permit yet, but you're going to get it. But you do have a holster. I have uh, what several is, holsters. What, what, oh, cool, cool. So what, what is your setup going to be? We're talking a 1911, right? 
Yeah, probably. Okay. So what do you what do you think you're going to want to go with, or what seems to be most well, comfortable for you? I've got I've got an on the waistband holster that I got from uh, Nathan. Uh, it's a leather holster. Ooh, yes. I've got uh, Kydex one that Garage Guns had made for me with uh, the old Night Strike logo on it. Cool. Cool. Okay. And uh, then I have it's more of an open carry holster because it's a it's a, mil a UM eighty three drop lake holster. Okay. Uh, what the uh, military used to use. So. Okay. Now That's is that I for think. your is that for your 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 Beretta? No, it's the it's the old it's the old one that is capable of holding the Beretta or the nineteen eleven. Nineteen eleven. Okay. Cool. Cool. Awesome. So now you're going to be looking the right at, one. You'll be looking at outside the waistband, but you'll be able to cover it. Right. So it won't be a problem. I mean, you can make that work. So you can make any concealment work if you just take a little time and think about how you want to do it or what's going to work best for you. I mean, if you just take five minutes and think, okay, what would be the best way I could dress to cover this up? You can make an outside the waistband work. I mean, actually, in the wintertime, if I'm going to the range, if I've got to run some errands and stuff, I'll be running outside the waistband with my Glock 17. And with a heavy winter coat on, yeah. you can't even see it, you know. Short of buying a new firearm, which right now it's not really an option. Okay. I'm kind of uh, tapped. Short okay. of buying a new firearm, I'm probably just going to carry what I have right now. And then down the line, when I can buy a new firearm, I'll probably get something in either 380 or get a, you know, a little small 45 that is easily concealable instead of the monstrosity that is the 1911. Yeah, it's 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 a solid chunk of, of steel, you know. It's <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Good. Well, at least you got something that's going to work for you and you know it's going to be okay. Um, all right, so Sandoz, one of the reasons why we're having this discussion was a combination of Nate2099 suggesting this topic on Instagram, and then also uh, Sandoz and I having to talk about you know what he conceals and what he uses for his holster because he's been using the same holster for a little while now. So Sandoz, why don't you share with us what what you do, what works best well, for you? I first started using a uh, an Alien Gear 3.0. Uh, those of you that don't know the Alien Gear holsters, I guess the numbers don't really matter. But I started using their original uh, third generation inside the waistband uh, last fall. I picked up their new. They call it shape shift. It's modular, and you can configure this to go inside, outside, paddle, belt slide, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Um, I pretty much only ever use it inside the waistband, but this thing is – I wear it almost every day. You, you forget you even have it on. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'm not carrying a, you know, a full-size 1911 government model. I mean, I'm carrying a shield, but still, this thing this thing's amazing. I – I, I put it on in the morning, and uh, I'm not going to say that I can carry at work, but if I did, uh, this thing's tuckable. Nobody would ever know it was there. Uh, nobody would ever spot the thing. And so uh, it, it's it's just amazing. I really like my Alien Gear holster. What uh, what price were you looking at for that setup? Because I know Matt had also done a review on that same setup, if I'm not mistaken. What NEA? Uh, what, well, what was the price? Yeah. Matt got a lot better price because I think they sent him one just to review it. Mm -hmm. I had to buy mine, but if you get the whole kit, they run ninety nine dollars. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, they have kind of limited availability. They have a wide range of pistols that it fits, and they're adding more all the time. Every six months or so, they add another half dozen models. Okay. But uh, I mean, they've got to you know they, they've got to build their their injection mold uh, for the shells for these things. So they you know they've got to have enough uh, interest, I guess, to to be be worth doing it but they're they're expanding all the time and they've got a lot bigger range of of uh, shells that they make for uh you know their their older holsters too but uh for 99 bucks you get the whole kit if you want just one configuration um you get the whole shell and then the backer that you choose and all the hardware for that and they they run you know 50 60 bucks somewhere in there for just getting one so really you get four holsters for an extra you know, 50, 40 or 50 bucks. It's, it's kind of the better deal. Um, I bought a second shell for my Glock and I can kind of switch back and forth. It takes all of, you know, two minutes to switch it over to the other pistol. Oh, yeah. So it's pretty cool. Hardware, the hardware seems to be holding up well, no problems with clips breaking or anything like that, or any problems with the screws at all, or maybe put a little bit of no lock around those screws. Um, okay. the, that's, that's one of the biggest things. If you're an alien gear user, you know about uh, blue Loctite because yeah. that or you know to tighten your screws down every week one or the other but yeah. no with the shape shift system it, it's completely uh, there are no screws other than ones that you don't ever touch so yeah. um as far as like put maybe putting some spacers in if you had an extra thick pistol or something you know you could put a spacer in there 
But aside from that, I don't ever touch uh, touch it with a screwdriver. The uh, the clips actually uh, um, are toolless. You just you turn them 180 degrees, and then uh, it's kind of like a kind of like a key mod type of a looking deal. You turn it upside down, and they pop right out. You can adjust the the clips up and down to adjust your ride height, your cant, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, these clips. I mean, I got this thing the uh, last I think last week in October. And it, it still looks new, other than the fact that, you know, the, the backer is, is super flexible. Um, as soon as you put the thing on, it just kind of molds to you. It's not like buying, you know, a, a crossbreed or something where it's a brand new chunk of cowhide and you got to wait six months before it really fits you right. Uh, this thing fits right out of the box. It's, it's very, very flexible, um, holds up really well. I don't know. The, the newer version, they've actually bound the edges so the edges don't uh, dig into you in case you're wearing it. You know, without an undershirt, um, they kind of did everything right this time. Cool. Adjustable cool. tension. Again, the the little retainer clip that holds everything together. You you pop that off with a with just a quarter turn, and then the end of that's a screwdriver. You can adjust your tension on that thing. Um, it's got. You can add on. It comes in the box. You can add on a little uh, thumb button that actually uh, gives it like a what a level two retention if you want that. But you okay. can. You know that that I guess I wouldn't worry about that so much if if I wasn't you know open carrying a whole lot. Yeah. So yeah, well, no, and, and it and it works well for you, and you got a lot of options. I mean, that's just it. Is you you just got to try something. And a lot of these companies have really good return policies. If you find you don't like it, usually they give you like like two weeks or thirty days or ninety days to try it out. And uh, you know yeah. you can always send it back if you're just not happy with it because you might be dropping anywhere between uh, forty and ninety dollars or seventy five dollars for a holster. Um, Real quick on the Gun Channel side, they're mentioning Concealment Express. Moon Food is saying that they kick Serious Bud at thirty-five bucks. A quick correction on the 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 the, the Clint video we were talking about. It's a Serpa Serpa holster. When you think Serpa, you know Phobus or Black Hawk, you start to kind of fall into the same style and design. So that's uh, that's something that you that you can that you see. So um, yeah, video I watched right. was a Phobus. Now we'll we'll get into belts here. We'll kind of run through the panel and see what you guys do for a belt. If you even do a dedicated conceal belt, carry belt. So we'll get to you on that one, Sandals, because I know you've got a good one that you use. Uh, Squib, if you're with us, if you can hear us, buddy, uh, what works for you for a holster? Do you have a holster preference? Uh, any certain brands you like to wear? Anything you've had really good luck with? Might be. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I started out open carrying, and then I went to conceal carry uh then i went back to open carry i mean uh, it's not it's not something i do every single day i'm i'm not opposed to to doing it every single day i just don't uh it sounds like you guys are mostly focusing on on conceal carry uh anything man we could talk outside the waistband any brands you've had good luck with somebody wants some advice on something solid they can buy where they don't have to worry about something that's going to be junk or it's going to fall apart well, I mean, uh, when I started out concealed carrying, I started with a Kydex holster because I thought, you know, okay, this is new high tech kind of, you know, material, blah, blah, blah. And I really didn't like it. I talked to somebody I knew that had more experience than me and uh, they said, why don't you try leather? So I went back to the store where I got my carry gun and they fitted me for a holster. And I'm the kind of person that just kind of buys something out of a catalog or buys it off the shelf. Uh, I'm not, you know, into the whole sales guy trying to sell me some overpriced piece of leather or whatnot. It was worth the money. Um, I definitely would, uh, if, if I, uh, well, not if, when, when I get back to concealed carry, yeah. uh, I'll probably be carrying a different gun. And at that point, I want to go to a place that's got a big selection and I want to be fitted for a holster for it. And I want to find one that I think is going to work. So I'll definitely go that route again. I recommend doing the same thing with motorcycle helmets, by the way. <laughs> get fitted for your helmet don't just buy one off the shelf oh yeah no <laughs> definitely no, you wanna, yeah yeah um i don't think it was the kydex that i didn't like um initially i think it was the kind of holster i got i kind of settled for what they had in stock and uh i i, I think that um when i do conceal carry again i won't uh i won't um give up on kydex i may uh you know if, if i'm gonna get fitted i'm gonna get fitted for a bunch of different holsters and i'll give kydex a, a try again and, and see if yeah. it works for me yeah, yeah uh now i know that some companies out there sell holsters online and they make good quality holsters 
So if I just order something uh, online and have it shipped to me, I may uh, just be taking a chance. I may get it and I may not like it. And it'll go in the box with all the other holsters. You know, everybody's got a holster box somewhere with, with used holsters. So yeah, I just send them all over the place. <laughs> I got like three of them up behind me on the, over here. I got one over there and one, one, two right here. So three uh, right here. Actually, uh, yeah. Now, as far as outside the waistband, uh, I mean, or not outside, but for open carry, I actually prefer a flap holster. And I know a lot of people do not like those. They want to be able to draw quick. Mm -hmm. I had no intention of being able to draw quick, even from concealed carry. I'm just not that fast. I'm not saying I want to be a statistic. I don't. But, uh, you know, maybe once I get back into concealed carry, I'll practice at home, pulling my shirt and, and pulling the gun and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. But I like, I like the fact that I just have it on me. I have it on me if I need it. If I got to use it that fast, if I've got to go from identifying the threat to taking down the threat in a tenth of a second, I, you know what? You guys are just going to hear, uh, hear about it uh, on some post somewhere that, you know, Squib died stupidly because I'm just I'm not that fast. Um, <clears throat> That's one of the reasons I prefer the uh, the uh, open carry is for me, it's a deterrent. And I know some people say, well, yeah, but you're also the first person that they're going to go after because they're going to try to take your gun. Well, that's one of the reasons I like a flap holster. If, uh, retention, you don't have an issue with a flap holster. Now, I can't draw it quickly, but you're also not going to get it from me easily. Yeah. Also, even if somebody did, even if I had a thumb break, which I kind of like those too. Uh, if somebody goes for my my holster, uh, you know, tries to get get my firearm, I'm I'm gonna take it out and bludgeon them with it. So, uh, and that's why sometimes I don't carry with a round in the chamber is so that when I'm pistol whipping them, I, it doesn't go off. But sometimes I do. The person uh, next to you instead of the person in front of you, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah. I, I when I've open carried and concealed carried, I've carried with one with one in the chamber and without one in the chamber with the safety on with the safety off. I'm just. Um, you know, but uh, I've really I prefer open carry. I prefer uh, flap holster, and uh, yeah, I mean it's just I know I'm kind of the oddball on on the whole thing, but uh, you know it's just it's what it is. No, that's all right, man. No, I just wanted to kind of kind of pick your brain to see what you, what you thought about it and what you know what works best for you. Uh, a few more comments. Well, I can on tell chat. you oh, go ahead. when you're when you're when you're romping around in the woods, yeah. you know, taking a hike or something like that, having having a holster that covers the entire firearm, protects it from scratches, uh, protects it from getting snagged on thorns and vines and branches and things like that. So it's it it, it serves a purpose. It's it's not it's not as cool as the other ones, I guess, or whatever it is, but uh, it serves yeah. a purpose. So. Well, and, and again, that's it. You got to find what's going to work for you, for the carry condition for you, for the gun that you have. You know what's going to what's going to be the best thing for you. Um, there was Nate twenty ninety nine was asking a question, and he said uh, shoulder carry uh, is it something better for bigger guys or just shoulder carry in general. A guy was talking about somebody else was commenting that they shoulder carried for a while and it would give them a back cramp. I think they said they were shoulder carrying a Desert Eagle, if I'm not mistaken. I think that would probably give you. A little bit of pain. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, me, I have one shoulder carry holster for my CT9, which I tried a couple times this winter. What I didn't like about it was it had to use clips to like be hooked into place and and more. I just I wasn't a big fan with it. It was more of a pain than anything. I'd prefer just to do myself uh, inside the waistband carry because I can. Um, you know, that's one of those things. And real quick, there is a company called Bernie or Burn B E R N E. And they do make a really cool heavy winter coat that has concealed. It's designed for concealed carry. It has a spot for your pistol and mags, which is really cool. You pull a flap down on the guns right there. Not a big fan of off body carry, but if you got to work outside or you want to be, you want to have a second gun on you, uh, look into that Bernie coat. It's B E R N E. It's either Burn or Bernie. It's a concealed carry coat or jacket. I'm hoping I can buy one next winter because I think it'd be a lot of fun just to have the G17 in there when I'm traveling. Obviously, I've got my concealed piece with me, but. Um, you know, but, but again, my, my personal preference is to try to keep the gun on me. So it's with me. Never know if you're going to take your coat off and you're going to go do something and you're going to need your firearm. So it's probably not the, not the best idea to go off body only, but that's just my own opinion. I don't yeah. know. I, I think I would kind of like to have a really nice shoulder rig that I could wear underneath oh, yeah. the suit. Sure. You know, sure, that'd be sure. kind of classy. Yeah. Oh yeah, of uh, course. Of course. Yeah. Now, do you, do you think of the shoulder rig as something mostly intended for a large gun? I mean, I know you could, uh, what, Yankee showed a picture of him uh, dressed up like James Bond one year for Halloween, and he had his PPK in a shoulder rig. 
So, I mean, you could carry a small gun in one, but do you, do you think of it, when you think of a shoulder ring, do you think of it for a big full-size gun, a hand cannon, something like that, or not really? You know, that's part of it, but yeah, I mean, because in a way it could be a little hard to conceal carry certain models. Uh, for me, it's not having any kind of exposure of the firearm around my waistline. It's on me. It's why I have like a coat on or something, or if you hunch over, you're doing some work outside, you don't want the gun to keep popping out from behind your t-shirt. I mean, I'm not overly conscious about printing. In fact, I don't even really care about it because I nobody's expecting, pe nobody's ever said anything to me about it, noticing me printing with the gun. You know, when I'm carrying it, I've never had anybody say, hey, nice pistol. I've never had it pop out or anything like that. But to me, the, the shoulder harness is kind of nice because then, or the shoulder carry is kind of nice because you don't have anything in the way. Maybe if you're doing a lot of driving or if you're an active person, you don't have to worry about maybe the holster shifting around a little bit. But then again, there's guys that 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 inside the waistband carry with their alien gear holsters and so on, and they don't ever have an issue with it. So I would say if you're going to carry a larger gun, think about going the shoulder route, uh, the shoulder holster route. I think it would definitely would help out a lot. Um, but again, I mean, there's guys that will say, well, I, you know, I, I, you know, inside the waistband carry my 44 mag or whatever. Okay, whatever works for you. I mean, it kind of depends on everybody's. Uh, figure and form and so on. Uh, for me, uh, when it comes to carry, typically in all my, my shooting videos, you probably never noticed this, but I'm inside the waistband carrying my car CT9. Uh, the holster, I just do Kydex, 15 degree can. Uh, I, I, th these are like 35 bucks, 40 bucks. They're sometimes on sale. These are clingerholsters.com. Uh, one of the reasons why I went with this company is I have a big problem. And you guys might run into this too. I'll buy a gun, maybe a new model or a, kind of a weird model, and there's no holsters out there for it. When I bought an FNS 9C Compact, Klinger was the only company that actually had a holster out there on the market for it that I could get. And I still had to wait like six weeks for it to show up after I ordered it. So if you're in the market for a brand new gun, you might want to make sure there's something out there, especially if you want to use it as a carry gun or a competition gun. Otherwise, you might be looking at an expensive custom job to get that holster made. So, you know, if you go with a Glock 19, Glock 17, Smith & Wesson Shield, uh, M and P, you're going to have a ton of holsters out there for you to choose from. Uh, you know, a lot of times you go on eBay and type in your model, of holster and they'll have it cross listed with like five or six other companies. I don't even know. This might be like an uncle Mike's. You can use, I can use this with multiple firearms. You have an extra little mag carrier here. This is designed for inside the waistband or outside the waistband. It kind of crunches down on itself when you, when you carry it inside, but I don't, I use a, uh, you know, Kydex holster, but out at the range, if I want to carry an extra mag, you know, right in front of me and have, you know, the G17 or whatever. Uh, there's nothing wrong with going with something like this, but it just might not be the perfect fit um, for, and I did play around with the paddle holster thing a little bit, but I'm just not a big fan of having something mechanical uh, blocking your draw, something that could fail when you need it. Also, I did a block, a Blackhawk holster review. I had like a dozen comments where people were saying, Hey man, that thing's going to ND if you're not careful. Apparently, I don't know what the deal is with the Blackhawk holsters. When you put them in there, that button could supposedly catch the trigger and cause the gun to go off. I never noticed it, but it kind of spooked me a little bit because I was using the Blackhawk holster for the G17 at the range. And um, just not, not a, I don't know. I still have this around this. I've got two or three of these because they're cheap. I think I paid like 10 or 15 bucks off eBay for these. Uh, there's a lot of Blackhawk knockoffs that are out there also on, on eBay that you can get. Uh, John is saying on the internal chat, he posted his um, Block 19 with the holster on Instagram and Twitter. So if you guys follow John Z, uh, make sure that you look that up and you can see a picture of it. Uh, let's see, thoughts on paddle holsters or button holsters for open carry so someone can't snag your gun from behind as easily. You know, a lot of police officers have a level two or a level three rig that they run with. If you train with it, Nate, if you practice with it enough, um, I think that, that you could become proficient with it. I mean, you might need that little mechanical extra there to give you that peace of mind, or you might work in an environment where you have to worry about Somebody snagging that holster, you might want that instead of just your standard, you know, Kydex draw, and that's it, right? Um, Vanessa Kitty is saying, my next purchase for shoulder holster will be Sam's Shop. So check out Sam's Shop. Uh, let's see. Vanessa Kitty said, I just bought the DeSantis Nemesis Pocket Carry. Okay, cool, cool. And again, there's people making chats down there, or there's people on the side chat here on YouTube saying, you know, I'm having trouble finding holsters for my gun. You might Again, you might be looking at uh, some sort of a, a, a custom job. Um, okay, Tough Belt with Alien Gear both going on their second year from uh, Mid-Missouri Gunner, Mid-Mo Gunner over there on the Gun Channel side. Now, let's just kind of shift over real quick. Let's talk about belts for a little while. Uh, when it comes to a belt, let's just let's just get this out right. I concealed for two years with just a basic Dickies belt that I bought from Walmart. Uh, when you're a bigger guy, belts can be kind of, if you've got such a large belt on, let me just kind of show you what I'm talking about. This is just an inexpensive 
$10 Walmart Dickies belt. If you can make this work for you, that's fine. Okay. Now understand that you've got a, a soft leather that you can basically bend. All right. It's gonna, it's not gonna have a lot of tension in it. All right. I just kind of wanted to show this off. So this is like my daily pants belt. Okay. Don't worry. My pants are on and you can make this work for concealed carry. That's fine. 10 or $15 belt. Not a problem. I'm not saying you can't do it. Go right ahead. Um, what I try to wear as much as I can, and I got this one from Sheepdog Leather. This that he's been on some uh, Night Strikes podcasts, and I don't know if he's still making belts, but the point uh, is, I don't think he is. Okay, okay, go if you can get yourself a good concealed carry rig or belt. This thing has an incredible amount of rigidity to it. So let me go ahead and put the uh, concealed carry piece on here. I mean, look at this. That's that's all you get for this is open. I mean, that's all you get for flex. That's it. And when you put this thing on, the weight bearing, you know, this is almost a pound of just, you know, steel. The weight bearing is nice when you're wearing it. You don't even, it, it takes the weight off your, your waist. You don't even really realize you've got the carry going on. Whereas if you put this on the other belt, it's going to sag. So you have to keep the belt that much tighter in order to get the holster to not sag behind your pants. Now, again, everybody's form and figure is a little bit different. Uh, me, I just, you know, spent 50 bucks and got a decent carry belt that and this thing is, is like, <laughs> this thing's like, you know, over a quarter inch thick leather. I mean, this thing is awesome. Um, you know, it works good. Now, a problem you can run into with a super thick belt is your clips, if they're only like an inch and a quarter long, they won't clear it because of the thickness of the belt trying to go out around and hook underneath. I ended up having to go with a, a two inch clip from a uh, clinger. And a lot of companies don't have a two inch belt clip, which is a problem you can run into. Um, Harry's Holster sent me a holster to test out. And I think they had a inch and a half or inch and three quarters clip that worked, just worked with that belt. Didn't have a lot of extra slack on it for it to clip on, but it did. But that's something also to think about if you go with a super thick belt. Uh, belt wise, let's just kind of run it through the room. Let us know if you have any certain brand you follow. I know over in the side chat, there's probably a lot of brands that are popping up at this point. Moon Food over on the Gun Channel side is saying Wilderness Tactical Belt, if you want a made in the USA 511 type belt. Uh, they're the company 511 ripped off. Okay. Good to know. So Wilderness Tactical, let's give them the business instead. Uh, YouTube side, if you guys want to throw some belts out there, let us know what works for you. You know, you've also got some of those ones that have those incredible amount of adjustment where they have little notches on them. We can move them in and out like, you know, like like quarter inch segments. Uh, those are some pretty cool belts. Uh, Gary, do you have a particular carry belt that you like? I know you said you're doing some pocket carry, but anything like when you go to the range, do you have a certain brand you like to wear or do you just grab whatever? I have not bought a dedicated carry belt i yeah. always have worn a fairly sturdy leather belt like walmart or something like that usually about a 20 dollar belt or something okay. like okay. that and uh it's worked relatively well i think part of the problem with the with that i've had with the phobus paddle holster is it doesn't retain it as well as it could and if your gun fits too tightly you'll end up pulling the whole holster out yeah which is what i ran into with the 85 i think if i had a sturdy enough holster i could get that thing or a sturdy enough belt excuse me that i could get that thing up and out of there so that's yeah. an investment i need to make there's just so many different kinds out there i haven't decided on one and it's hard to find them in stores you about have to order them yeah. so i'm kind of waiting to hear from different people you know like today find out what everybody likes and stuff like that yeah, they're throwing a lot of brands out there. The Bigfoot Gun Belt, they make a belt that's also marketed by somebody that's almost identical. I don't know if it's a 511 Tactical. There's another company out there that makes a gun almost identical to Bigfoot, but I think Bigfoot might be a little more uh, inexpensive. Uh, real quick for like uh, for competition, you know, if you're thinking three gun, um, this is kind of cool. This is a G17 uh, holster that I got off of eBay. All right, there's a guy that makes these. They were $27. And this thing just fits perfectly. It also it also works with my SD9 VE. This is a Uncle Mike's uh, competition belt. It's got kind of the two layers of Velcro. You can pull it off and slap it on and so on. But uh, for three gun, you know, you want to think about what you're going to need. Now, the rules for our league is that just simply that the gun doesn't fall out when you get a good tug. If it doesn't fall out, then you can use the holster for competition. But this guy has all kinds of different designs and styles. You just do a Kydex search. I mean, the problem with eBay is you're going to look it up. There's like 50 companies that make these. I went with one of the least expensive ones because I was trying to get an inexpensive three gun setup because I didn't know if I was going to like it uh, the first time I tried it. So that's why I didn't want to go whole hog and buy all kinds of expensive gear that I wouldn't use. 
So, but yeah, if you look around on eBay, don't be worried. I mean, read the feedback ratings that people give for companies like this. You might be able to find that cut X holster with that design that you want, um, you know, and, and not have to break the bank on. Like I said, that one, I think was $27.99. The magazine holsters that I use are just an imitation blade tech. I think they were $14.99 and they've got the Molly attachments on them and they work really well. So, you know, the idea is to find uh, what's going to work best for you. Uh, a little more about belts. Uh, John Z, you know, you know, we're just giving you some some basic advice here. I know that, you know, you're not carrying, but, you know, when you had the Block 17 and you would have been amazed what a weight bearing carry belt would have done for that solid piece of iron. I mean, you could you could have that thing on there and not even realize it's there. Do you have any thoughts on belts at all? Would you take that into consideration yourself when you're shopping for gear? Well, my current uh, belt is a 511. Okay, okay. Very, all right. very sturdy belt. All right. The Velcro, mm, I would go my, maybe try the belt you suggested, um, uh, you know, the rip-off version, if they okay. do have Oh, the belt. Wilderness Tactical, the one yeah. the 511 borrowed from? Yeah, but yeah, the, 511, have... the 511 yeah. belt is very sturdy. Okay. But for my previous work, for my previous job that was on my resume i have a lot of heavy duty belts that are leather okay and they they withstand the test of time definitely so i i love them i mean they're regular um dress belts but they're like gun belts for civilians that's how sturdy they are like the one you have yeah yeah almost like 100 percent the same thing yeah and uh yeah they they work excellent Cool, man. So you got the 511s. You've already got kind of some experience. And, and again, you, you do notice a difference, in my opinion, I think you notice a difference between that and a, a lesser, you know, lesser cost belt. There's nothing, you know, everybody starts off with what works best for them. So. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to wear my duty rig belt because yeah. that's like, you know, look too weird walking around with that stuff. Yeah. I don't yeah. do that work anymore. So, um, yeah, the well, regular, that regular heavy duty leather belt that you had is similar to the the dress belts okay. that I used to wear. And that uh, that works perfectly. Now, uh, Jorge is saying that this looks like my duty belt, Travis B11 LOL. I think he's talking about maybe the one that I showed off. For me, I don't know if it was that or the three-gun belt. Um, you know, me, I've always got T-shirts on. I'm always covering up my belt, so I guess I don't worry about how it looks if it looks a little too police officer-esque. I guess I'm just thinking more for function over fashion or six months out of the year, I've got a coat on so nobody notices it. Uh, another question I had over here on the YouTube side was, would you ever own and carry the six hour P226 uh, Mark 25? Yeah, uh, I have a uh, six hour uh, classic carry P229 and it's not the same size as the 226. It's pretty close. But Is he offering to send you the 226? I don't know. Would you ever own and carry? I guess if you want to ship it to my, my FFL, that'd be great. Um, I, I would carry it. I don't know if I conceal carry because I'm kind of a big guy. In fact, one of the reasons why I went with the, uh, car CT nine is because it's thin, it's only an inch thick and it, it does conceal well, and it doesn't require a lot of just changes in my dress and so on. So that's why I go for a thinner gun. Personally, that's why it goes uh, with a single stack nine. Uh, but of course, Night Wolf, if you want to send one to me, I'd be more than happy to take it from you. So, um, again, a lot of guys, make sure you're checking the chat. A lot of companies, you guys are all throwing out all kinds of different brands and see what works best for you all kinds of different materials and patterns uh see dano said he'd be back in a couple minutes all right uh night strike for a belt what are you going to go with when you start carrying what's going to work for you i got this really awesome belt from john z it's a 511 uh tactical belt it is awesome that's what i'm going to use john do you have the hookup with 511 tactical are you not telling me something here because uh, I back, have yet to review a 511 product. So. Back, back, back in the day when I was doing the work I was doing, um, I got those things on discount. Yeah. So yeah. I, I saved a lot of money. There you go, man. And by the way, John, you were asking a question over in the chat. If I'm going to do a tire review of the tires that, that – the old tires that I moved out, the new tires, there is actually a video that will post on Monday. So on Patreon, I posted a, a long-term test, a four-year test on the uh, Goodyear Wrangler radios, which was, again, guys, the reason why I was late this morning is because I had to get tires put on. Well, they're being put on as we speak. But, yes, John, there will be a review. And I'm going to do a review of the new tires, too, just to let you That's know. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, man. I show them off and how they've worn and, and what kind of problems I've had with them and how well they've worked and so you, on. You originally mentioned it, and you didn't say anything yeah. about a review, and I was a little, oh, yeah. a little disturbed. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I've even got the I've got the uh, the footage sitting right here on the desktop, and it's sitting on Patreon right now. It's going to switch over to the uh, YouTube side on a Monday morning. So, so if you want to see that review for any of those of you that are interested, <laughs> go check out Travis P. Levin on Patreon. Subscribe yes. to him, help support please, him, and please. check out his awesome videos. Yeah, I've got I've got some some people that have been with me for a while on Patreon, and got a lot of a lot of loyal supporters. So I just I post the videos. I don't do anything Patreon exclusive now. I just I, the videos I post over there, you get to see them a couple days in advance, and then they come over to the YouTube side. But I'll post five or six at a time. Like with Tulsa, I posted all the videos within like one day. So you can see the whole Tulsa collection on Patreon. So, uh, but anyway, back to the, back to the holster talk. Uh, okay. So nice strike. You're set to go. Uh, Sandhills, what back. belt do you use? What works, what works best for you? Which Dan, we'll come back to you in a sec here. Okay. Uh, all right. Sandhills, what, what works best for you? Might be busy. All right, so Dan. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm here. What uh, we've been trying to get loaded up here. What was the question? Real quick, what belt do you go with when you can still carry? I've got two that I have worn exclusively since I I got these things again about okay. six months ago or a little better now. Okay. Um, the first one is an Alien Gear, and the other one's a Bigfoot. They're the same belt. Alien Gear stopped branding their own belts. Um, it's it's the same company, Alien Gear, Bigfoot, okay. same company. But uh, I've got one in black, one in brown, which is all they make. Um, I, the first one has a has a black buckle. The second one I got the the polished uh, silver buckle. So now and they they're real easy to switch back and forth. So I kind of have four belts in one that way. But um, steel core, fourteen ounce bridle leather, and I cannot tell that there's been any um, any wear on this thing whatsoever. Other than I mean, you can kind of see you know which notch I normally carry in. It depends on if I'm carrying or not. You know which notch I go with, of course. But uh, these things just, they wear like iron. Um, I, wear, I wear it as a work belt. I wear it as a dress belt. It's nice enough that you can, you can get away with doing that. Uh, super nice stuff, super tough stuff. And it, it kind of works just like what you were just showing it with yours where, you know, you can clip your holster on it, hold it out. It'll hold itself up. Um, if I ever get around to making a, a review of this thing, um, I'm going to put it on the floor and, and stand on the edge and it's not going to buckle. Oh, nice. um, and, and being a big guy, those of you that are bigger guys, you can relate to this. Um, you wear a belt for a while, and eventually when you hang this thing up, it's got a U-shape to it in the back. Yeah. And this belt absolutely is still straight as an arrow when it hangs up. So that, that steel core makes all the difference there. It's yeah. not just heavy leather, which you can get like $5 less to not have the steel core, but... Uh, and if you want super, super heavy duty, they make an 18 ounce version too. It's extra thick, but man, the, the most popular one, 14 ounce steel core. Uh, like I said, uh, black or brown, I've got both so I can wear it with khakis or black pants, whatever. And cool. man, it, it just, it looks just as good with jeans as it does with dress pants. Yeah. So we're not saying you have to go out there and get a carry bill, but you will be amazed with how just the weight bearing. You, it's now, the difference between having it not is just unreal. I mean, it really is. For, for yeah. a year and a half, I had just a Cabela's, um, just a nylon D-ring buckle. You know, not not as heavy as a Riggers belt, but you know, it it, it had the double D-ring buckle, and then then it pulled back through itself, uh, velcroed back on itself, and that's what I wore as a work belt. You know, and everything. Okay. It was my concealed carry belt, yeah. and it works. But with with one of those, you have to cinch it down. And the, all the support comes from having your belt so tight you can barely breathe. And so that's the biggest thing with a, with a heavy belt or a stiff belt is you don't have to make it to where you can't breathe or where it's uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be, you know, steel core if you don't want that. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys are using the, the track line ones where you can have infinite adjustment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just find one that works for you. But if, if you like to wear it so tight you can't move, then, you know, it, your your options are a lot more out there. Definitely. But if, if you kind of want, again, if you're a bigger guy like I am and you've got uh, what we call the tactical muffin top, it's nice to have. Oh, yeah. No, I call it the tactical, tactical dad bod. Uh, tactical top. dad bod. Tactical dad bod. It's, 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 it's more, you know, it sounds like you're more of like the. You know, you're, the, you're the provider, so tactical dad bod. So it, yeah. a tactical dad bod, it definitely bleeds more toxic masculinity than tactical muffin. Because when I think of muffins, I don't think of masculinity. Uh, muffin tops, you know, those are definitely masculine, but not the whole muffin. No, no. Uh, <laughs> anyway, enough with that. So if you want to know what we're talking about, check out Matt's chat from Wednesday night. Uh, you'll you'll get the full toxic masculinity uh, experience. So, uh, but no, no. But back to belt. So yeah, it is it is important that you pick one that's going to work best for you. Uh, you know, holsters are going to work best for you. 
Uh, Squibby, or no, Dano, Dano, Dano. Uh, belts. What works for yes. you for belts? Yeah. Uh, first of all, let me just touch on something that Sand Hills just mentioned. Yes. How you wear your belt, do you? And and then we're going to talk about. I, I am not a slim trim six pack kind of guy. Yeah, okay? you are. You don't. Uh, but uh, I I don't wear my belt or my pants on top of my belly. Okay, I wear them at the waistline, and yeah. at the waistline, uh, you can have options. And, and and I'll get to that in just a moment because what Sand Hills is saying is correct. If you wear your pants on top of your belly, you're he's absolutely right. You're not going to be able to breathe. Uh, but uh, I started it with an SOE uh, tactical riggers belt, and and the issue with that was it was a great belt, and it's kind of like a Kydex sandwich, nylon on the inside and the outside. In the middle, there's a piece of Kydex, which gives it that rigidity. That's fantastic. Uh, but the issue with that was is you had to remove uh, one of the belt uh, halves to actually change it from one pair of pants to another, and that was kind of a, a hassle at the end or beginning of every day. Uh, then I switched to a, a wilderness tactical belt uh, where I did not have to uh, re remove the, the uh, uh, belt clip itself just to go from one pair of pants to the other. It did have that infinite adjustability. But again, I don't wear my pants on my belly. I wear it just under my belly. So it depends on how you wear your pants as to whether that will work. Or whether, like Sandhills mentioned, it's going to feel like you're being squeezed. Yeah. Well, I, I do the same thing, Dano. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, moving down I'm, the line. I'm, oh, I'm wearing the same size pants I was in high school. I'm just wearing them four inches lower. <laughs> <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm, still a, I'm still a size 30. <laughs> 30, I remember when I was a 30. That was like the sixth grade when I was a size 30. Sixth grade, fifth grade, one of those two. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, but before we go on to the next person, uh, yeah. I, I view, and, and I, I for me, it's absolutely true that the belt is the foundation of which you build the support system for your holster and your firearm. Because you can have the greatest holster in the world, and it doesn't matter if you have a Walmart belt. And it's not a slam on a Walmart belt. I'm just using that no. as, as a, an analogy. If you have a thin, weak <clears throat> belt that when you hold it up vertically by itself, it just droops. Uh, that's how much support you're getting. None. It, and it, it does. I mean, you just think we're talking out of our heads here, but you, you'll be amazed at the feel you put it on. It's like, wow, where'd the weight go? You know, it might even make you want to carry a larger concealed carry gun because you can more comfortably carry, you know, an extra 16 ounces of steel and a double stack, whatever, you know, whereas before you might be like going with your single stack nine or going with your little pocket pistol, which is fine. But, uh, it's, it, it is, it really does. That's a good point that you make there. It really does make that foundation so go with something try something different you know again like i said with a lot of these companies they give you 30 days to try it if you don't like it just ship it back get your money back you know so but but again the idea is that you have something that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna support well it's gonna carry well it's gonna make you want to carry more uh carry comfortably forget that you're carrying to a point right um and and just be safer to use overall just something that's gonna work better for you and says something you're not gonna be adjusting or having to pull your pants up you know every time you get out of your car uh, Travis, has anybody yeah. mentioned sizing or, or just in general? Are we talking for, for, for belts themselves or what? Yes, yes, for belts. Uh, I don't think so. No, it's one. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some manufacturers will state it on their websites, but let's say if you normally wear a 32, they will suggest you get, as an example, a 34 if you're going to conceal inside the waistband yes. to, to adjust, make room for that belt. So don't order a 32 if that's what you normally wear, if you plan on wearing it inside the waistband yeah you got to give yourself a couple a couple extra inches there for the for the slack it's going to take up so definitely make sure you do that and and even if it doesn't you're just gonna have a couple extra inches on your waist that's going to be pushing through the belt loop it's not like you're going to have the whole thing flapping off the side or whatever so yeah you definitely want to go a little bit larger than what you normally do um same same thing i see my idea if you're inside the waistband carry with your pants you might go with pants that are just one size bigger just so you have that extra space for the gun and the holster so you can safely draw it it's going to be more comfortable, you know, again, it's just kind of, it just takes a little bit of time to adjust. You're going to be really self-conscious the first couple, maybe days, weeks, or months that you're carrying. You're always thinking, God, does anybody see this? Uh, oh, I keep filling around with it. And if you keep messing with your carry, there is a good chance that there's something that's not right, that either your holster is not the right angle or you don't have the right kind of holster, or if it's uncomfortable and you don't want to do it, you should be able to get yourself set up so that you know you have a gun on you, but you can also comfortably carry all day long. Uh, I think that's probably one of the most important things is that you do have something you can drive with it on, you can walk around with it on, you can work with it on, 
Um, also, when you first get used to it, some of you guys carry 24-7 or you carry, you know, when you're in your home. You know, don't just take your concealed piece off when you walk in the door. Wear it around the house. Wear it when you do normal things. Get that belt broken in. Get that holster broken in, depending on what kind of a setup you're going with. Uh, just because it is a bit of a change when you first get into conceal. And that's kind of the idea about the shows to just give people some advice, parts, what works best for you, holsters, belts, etc. One of the best pieces of advice I got when I first started carrying, uh, what actually was from uh, Luke, one bad Marine, uh, was uh, to do the Walmart walk uh, to get yourself comfortable. Uh, concealed carry didn't come to Illinois until about uh, five years ago. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Uh, so, so I was in my fifties when I was first for the first time in my life, legally able to carry. And so, uh, you know, all my life I was entrenched with, you know, oh, you know, everybody's looking at me, everybody's staring and, uh, you know, and everybody can kind of tell, tell their old story, but it helped me get over the fact that no people are more self-involved in their own lives than looking at you. And why is there a little tiny crease in your shirt? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've never had anybody say anything at all, uh, except for maybe like a my own members of my own family that saw it on me, you know, when I was in the house walking around with family. Um, but you, you don't need to be self-conscious about it. You don't need to mess with it. Practice at the range, practice drawing and reholstering, obviously, with an unloaded gun. Uh, get yourself comfortable with it and, and you'll be fine. You don't got nothing to worry about. Do carry. I mean, you have a right to defend yourself if you can. Uh, we highly, highly encourage you guys to do so, you know. Cool. Uh, okay, and then the last person here about the belt talk, uh, Squid. What do you think, man? You have a preference? I'm okay for with. I'm okay with off the shelf. I don't think right. you have to have a fancy, really expensive belt. I think if it if it fits and it's sturdy, that's really all it takes. Now you might want to go the extra mile and get something that maybe is more comfortable. You may want to get something that's a little bit more durable. You may. Well, one thing that I like is when you're going online. And those are all my fans, by the way. When you're going online and you're looking at holsters and you've got these yeah. American company, you know, these are these are mom and pop kind of do it out of their garage or whatever made in America uh, for the holsters and pouches and things like that. A lot of them do offer belts and you can just buy it at the same time. So you can get something you can support an American business. You can get something that's got the same quality and craftsmanship as a holster you're getting, you know, whether it be a. Uh, uh, for concealed carry or open carry and if you want you don't have to put anything on it and what do you know you got a belt uh the belt that i wear i got from a place that sells uh motorcycle clothing you know leather and, and things like that and and whatnot because i ride and it it's perfectly fine for inside the waistband uh concealed carry of a full-size uh firearm it's it's got it's got enough comfort and retention and whatnot but uh off the shelf is fine Okay. Yeah. I mean, again, you want something that's got a little bit of rigidity to it just for the weight bearing ability of it. Uh, interesting question over here. And we'll probably make this the last question before we start to wrap up. What's the best holster for a motorcycle rider? Well, now see, that yeah. is, I tell you what, when I start concealed carrying again, I'll let you know if, uh, if uh, it's kind of uncomfortable under, I, I'm one of those guys who wears a riding suit. Even though I, I don't have a sport bike, I ride a cruiser, I have a riding suit because I was in an accident once and uh, that could have made a difference and I've decided it's worth the money to invest in the uh, extra protection. Some people might say it's uncomfortable, it's hot, it's, you know, it takes extra time to put on, blah, blah, blah. Yes, so does uh, carrying a concealed uh, carry firearm and EDC flashlight and EDC knife and all the other stuff that we clip on and attach. And after a while, you just get used to it. And pretty soon, what do you know? It takes two minutes. You're ready to go. You're out the door. But uh, when I start concealed carrying again, I'll let you let you know how it works with a riding sure. suit. Uh, we'll I would like to know now. in Michigan, I cannot open carry inside my uh, vehicle. So if I'm open carrying, when I come up to my truck, I actually have to take the the holster off, take the gun off, put it in a case and put it in the vehicle. Now, my motorcycle is considered a vehicle, but, I, but I'm out in the open. So could I open carry? I'm, I've never got a hold of anybody uh, with the state to find out if I could do that. But uh, I would say that uh, open carry on a motorcycle would be uh, probably really easy unless you had a riding suit. Then it just wouldn't work out. So Yeah, yeah. That's that's a good one. I mean, I don't know. I, it's it's whether or not you're allowed to open carry or not. And, uh, you know, do you have any kind of, of saddlebags or side boxes on your bike that you can put your pistol in if you needed to to lock it up when you're moving around like you like you well, see what you do with your vehicle? And 
see, therein lies another thing, because we're supposed to separate the ammunition from the firearm when you transport it, right? Yeah. But I've heard different, I've heard some people say you've got to have the ammo in the trunk and the gun in the, in the uh, back seat, uh, or, or the ammunition in the bed and the, and the gun, and, and then, you know, I've heard other people say, nope, you can have them both in the back seat on the floorboard as long as one's in one box and one's in another. So could I put a handgun in a case in the left saddlebag and put an ammo box in the right saddlebag and go out to the range? I don't know. I would say the answer is just move to Nebraska and it's not even an issue. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, see, <laughs> as nice as Nebraska is, it's just as cold as Michigan. So no. Oh, so, I know. I know. <laughs> so once you get Arizona temperatures out there and maybe a couple prickly pears, yeah, I'll consider it. Well, I just mean you know, just in terms of just general transport of your firearms and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. but because you, yeah. you guys have you have more freedom than we do when it comes to that, that's for sure. Oh man. All right, guys. So uh, we've been going for a little over an hour, almost an hour and a half now. And uh, again, got a busy weekend lined up. I need to get moving. But we're going to go ahead and do the 8,000 subscriber drawing. What it was is I, I made a quick video thanking you guys for 8,000 subs on YouTube. I said, go on over to uh, Instagram and you can uh, post a comment for whatever topic you'd like us to discuss or just to say hello, you know, over on the on the Instagram post, which was a thank you for the 8,000 subscribers. And uh <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's just go into a screen share right now. We're going to go ahead and just do the drawing real quick before we call it. And uh, so so what I'm going to do is is take the uh, the URL for the post, and we're going to go into the uh, Instagram random comment picker. And if you posted a comment on that post, uh, it's going to enter you in the drawing. And I've got some some promo some promotional items that were given to me from Fort Scott Munitions that I'll be sending to you. I'm going to throw a few little Nebraska items in there too, just for fun. And uh, who knows, there might be a few things showing up. So if you do win, all I've got to do is just uh, PM me, just private message me through YouTube with your mailing address, and I will go ahead and send to you uh, what I've got lined up for you. So Forrest Scott gave us a couple neat little items to, to, to hand out there, and uh, if you want to make a response to it or whatever, you can do that. That'd be cool. So I'm not sure if you guys can see it. This was the Instagram post that I did about a week ago, and uh, we had about 45 people, I think, post comments on it and just post in general. So thank you for doing that. So let's go ahead and do the uh, the random comment picker. Now, can you guys see this on your end? Is this showing up on your side? I've seen anybody from the panel to respond because I'm I'm just going off of one tab here. Yeah, I mean, I can see it and read it. Okay, okay, cool. So this is the URL right here. I have not used it yet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run it. You're going to see all the names on the bottom left-hand corner here, kind of run through quickly, and it'll just pick one. So if you are on that post, you need to contact me through YouTube. Uh, or you can just email me at thecalibercorner at gmail.com and I will let you know or I'll, I'll get your package in the mail as soon as I can. So let's go ahead and do this real quick and then we'll call it. So now it's, uh, and it does filter out duplicate users. So you won't be able to, uh, if you posted like five or six topics, you're only in there one time. Me, I think I responded to a bunch of you with thank you, thank you, great idea, great topic. I could pop up, but I'm only down there one time like you guys. And this is not for me, this is for you. So let's see what happens here. It's going to pick the random winner and the winner is frank hellman you got it man uh <laughs> and his comment was the newest internet sensation travis b11 i don't know if i'm the newest man and i'm definitely not a sensation i can tell you that so frank you got it frank is a regular commenter on my videos he also gives me a lot of uh, uh information and emails about political items going on uh, legislature items going on uh so frank uh just go ahead and uh hit me up with the mailing address and I will be more than happy to send you the package in the mail. I'll send it through uh, U.S. Postal Service. It's going to come priority mail. I'll give you a tracking number. And I'm going to hook you up with a few items. So I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. But anyway, guys, we're going to go ahead and call it. I've got some stuff to do. i got to pick the vehicle up at the, at the tire store. It's uh, just about ready here. i got an update on it. And I'm going to go get that here in a little bit. So before we go, let's just kind of run it through the room. First of all, you guys that joined us on the panel that aren't with us right now, uh, thanks for joining in. I know, Matt, you were here. Thanks for doing that. And uh, Gizzer Gary, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, no, thanks for having me. Uh, sorry about the audio. I just jumped in my car. I'm getting ready to take off myself. But uh, okay. anyway, um, thanks, everybody, for watching my videos. Uh, Gizzer Gary on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and various other places, gizzergary.com. Good deal, man. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing, man. And I do want to come down and shoot with you this summer if possible. You're maybe four or five hours away. It's worth the drive. I'd love to come down there. I'm just not too far from the Kansas border, actually. So we'll definitely go do some 
do some range time or something this summer. You let me know when you're going to be free and we'll make it happen. All right. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Cool. 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 And I, I, and I love to experience constitutional carry. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. I wish we had it here. Maybe we'll get smart and get it. I don't know. Nebraska's pretty bass backwards about things. We're usually the last to adopt everything. So maybe it'll happen, but uh, anyway. All right, cool. Uh, John Z, anything you want to plug before we go, man? Uh, just thank you for uh, the invite. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for the panel. And don't forget to check out gunchannels.com. Definitely get over there, get signed up. Uh, toxic Masculinity will be going into production at some point. Don't know when. I wish uh, Matt was here, but I know he was he was on his way home from work. So uh, Toxic Masculinity is a clone that's going to be going into production. And uh, I don't know if our bottle is going to get FDA approval there, John, but uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, again, we're not going to show pictures. Because we got to keep today's podcast uh, family friendly, but it is G rated for gangsta. So, anyway, thank you, John, for doing that. I appreciate it and joining us today. Right on. Good stuff, man. Good talking to you. All right, Dano, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you're going to take the responsibility to carry, carry every day wherever you can. Right on, man. Exactly. Exactly. Because it's those places where you least expect it that danger is going to happen, right? Well, no, we know where bad things happen, right? I mean, it's obvious they happen in gun-free zones. So you should definitely be carrying in a gun-free zone. Obviously, you got to abide by your state and local laws for certain places, but, you know, do what you can, right? Good yep. stuff. Good stuff. Cool, man. Cool, cool. All right, moving down the line. Uh, again, uh, Sandhill Shooter, happy anniversary for you and the wife. Uh, you want to go ahead and just uh, say anything before we go? Um, yeah, thanks everybody for the sub. You guys somehow overnight put me up over the 1000 mark. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll take all the subs I can get. Obviously, um, we're going to, uh, I think I'm going to put together, it's not going to be this weekend. I'm not going to get time today or tomorrow, but uh, I'm going to put together a, a nice giveaway for the thousand sub mark. Um, figure out what I can do. I think I'll include a Sandhills, uh, shooter t-shirt, uh, in the size that you're choosing maybe with that. But, uh, I think here, as soon as we're done, um, we're on the road right now, uh, Mrs. Sandhills and I, or on YouTube, she is Sandhills Sweetheart now. Uh, I think we might go live just for the heck of it, because nothing's coming up until Rick goes on here after a while. So cool. uh, anybody wants to jump on that, uh, watch for that here uh, after a while. Good deal. Good deal. What is your weather doing up there? We're in the same state. It's like sunny and like 70 degrees out here. What? It, it looks like wintertime for you, man. What's, is it snowing or what? Oh, no, no, no. Here, let me... <laughs> Oh, you Look guys think stuff. Look at that. Beautiful. You can see for miles. You can shoot for miles. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. Beautiful, man. You get used to that, too. You get cramped up, but you get claustrophobic in uh, big cities. It's uncomfortable, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, so, so for that one, you, yeah, you go ahead. Pictures of, and, I mean, when I was on Caliber Corner during deer season, you guys have seen the, the place I came from. So even where I live now, I mean, right now, this is the neighbors are all too close. It's, if you can fire a gun and your bullet can hit a house, then it's too close. No, oh, yeah, of course, obviously. Where I, where I grew up, I could fire a gun in you know just about any direction, and uh, the bullet would run out of steam before it would hit somebody's house. So that's, oh, that's what we're saying. <laughs> um, so you said for that thousand sub giveaway, you're going to give away a Browning rifle? Is that right? A Browning bolt action uh, rifle? Uh, like, you know, what? I have been uh, wanting one of those for my entire life, uh, my at least my entire adult life. And since I've had one less than 24 hours, uh, heck no. Okay. We're not All getting right. away. But the, uh, I'm going to sell it to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to sell it to me. It's all the right. Browning is okay. too much. <laughs> um, I have found somebody local who's actually a family that is uh, making T-shirts. So uh, you can find my stuff on Spreadshirt, but I think that uh, I'm going to check the quality out on what they do. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be a lot better quality. I think I'll start getting shirts from there. Uh, instead of uh, instead of Spreadshirt. But you can go check out Sandhill Shooter on Spreadshirt right now, too, and uh, look at all of the cool stuff that you can get with uh, my logo on it. All right. Sweet, sweet. Cool. And thanks for the invite, Travis. Yeah, no problem, man. If we, and if people follow you over on Facebook and what, Instagram, too, don't you have postings for the Spreadshirt shops over there? I believe I do. Uh, you yeah. can follow me on Instagram at Sandhill Shooter. You can uh, follow me on Facebook, Sandhill Shooter, also. Uh, we'll like the page if you want to. Cool, cool, cool. And, yeah. and Sandra Sweetheart has something she'd like to tell you real quick. All right, go ahead. Hey, you did all the buying. All I did was set it up, right? I just played matchmaker for your husband and the rifle. I didn't actually do I feel really bad because that that's not an inexpensive rifle, but 
you got him his dream gun. So, you know, that's, that is one heck of an anniversary present. That's all I got to say. So <laughs> you did. And it just, and it fate, it was just fate that that, that, that guy selling it from, from Tulsa or in Tulsa just happened to be from Nebraska. That made it easy to get that rifle back to you guys, which, you know, it was, it was tough for me to not, for him to not see what I was trying to do, but I'm glad we were able to make it work. And you guys got that to him and it should bring home a nice, was, buck. it'll bring home a nice buck next winter, right? Next fall. I was completely oblivious. So, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was just like, you, you that, you think anyway, so if you guys don't know what we're talking about, you can go back and watch the chat earlier when we had the uh, sandals introduction, he shows off his beautiful little Browning 270 rifle with an awesome maple stock. It's freaking awesome. So cool, man. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Uh, good to have you as always, man. All right. So uh, Squibby, any final words before we go? Just thanks for the invite. Cool, man. Cool. I think I appreciate you joining in and always throwing your two cents in. And it was great having you last week talking about, you know, the mil military perspective on cleaning guns. That was really cool. I went back and listened to it again. And it was, it was just, it was interesting. It was really neat to hear somebody that has that actual experience. You know, that was good to have that on there in last week's show. Cause I didn't know, you know, what can you really say about cleaning guns? Right. But it was good to have the, the panel and have you on there. So thanks for always joining us. And we're coming up on a year. I think next week might be the one year anniversary of Caliber Corner. Uh, the episode number 43. So I've taken about 10 episodes off over the year. We throw holidays and stuff in there too. So uh, I next week's topic, I'm going to go back to the Instagram post and see what people had to say, and uh, we'll go for we'll go from there. So again, Frank Hellman, again, you are the winner for the uh, the drawing on uh, Instagram. So just go ahead and send me some some shipping information wherever you want me to ship the items. I'm going to ship to you, and we'll go from there. Uh, real quick, just kind of running through the uh, the roll call here. <coughs> we got Nate twenty ninety nine on the YouTube side. Vandaliska Vlogs is with us from the land down under. Uh, Jorge Cortez is with us. Calaveras 32 special joining us. Uh, Claude Mulligan was here too. Oh yeah. Really nice out there in Holdridge. Yes. The weather in Nebraska, I think it's going to be great today. Uh, we were supposed to get nailed on Friday and I don't know if it was as bad as what they said. So that's good. Stealth Hunter 1000 was in the house. Patriot in the dark was with us today. D temp 62. Uh, boob, you know what for what is joining us today. Rich White is with us. Uh, again, Frank Hellman again. Uh, Rob D with us also. Vanessa Kitty. Uh, Georgia Trucker, Scott Pacini. Again, it's always awesome having you guys here. Nightwolf and anybody else I missed. Thank you for joining us. And over on the Gun Channel side, uh, Moon Food, I just want you to know that I did post that link for the Wilderness uh, Belt, Instructor Belt. That's over there on the YouTube side, so it's ready to go. So Moon Food 78, thanks for joining us. Uh, Paper Plane Crash was with us also. Mid-Ohio, no, Mid-Missouri Gunner was with us too. And John was there and here. And uh, G-Webs was here at the start too. So again, guys, I thank you for watching. I thank you for listening. Uh, thank you so much for, for getting up early. We might do a nine o'clock start time. I don't know. Again, it's tough because on the weekends, like Squib said, got to take advantage of the warm weather. Got to get outside and get as much stuff done as we can. But we may just shoot for a nine o'clock start time. I don't know. Uh, just just, just kind of check the check the feed for my channel. Check over on gunchannels.com. I try to put the, the, you know, the link for the video over there. And uh, just if whatever time it says it's going to start is what we're going to start at. It kind of depends on if I got to get on the road or not. But Otherwise, guys, that is it. Thanks for thank you for joining us today. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for supporting all these channels. Again, get over to gunchannels.com, get your account, get over to guntube.org, get your account, start uploading some videos. And uh, I think that's about it, guys. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, you guys, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as always, we will talk to you soon. Uh, anybody want to say goodbye to Felicia before we go? Bye, Alicia. Alicia or Felicia? I can't remember. I thought it was, is it Alicia or Felicia? No, I always say bye to Alicia. Who's, who's Felicia? Is Felicia her twin sister? So, uh, I think it could be cousins. Okay, so we have adios. Adios, uh, Felicia, Alicia, right? Goodbye, Felicia, Alicia. All right, that's it, guys. We're out of here. Y'all take care. Have a great weekend. Y'all have fun. Be safe. Start carrying or get your permit so you can start carrying and watch this podcast. Take our advice. I think you guys are going to be fine. So have fun. Be safe. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.